everybody and welcome to the January 2022 update from Clyde Bridge Station. Now it is coming to you a little bit earlier, or quite a few weeks earlier than uh, what it would normally be, but then um, there's a couple of reasons for that. Basically uh, I'm at the mercy of the Royal Mail and Scale Model Scenery because on the 7th of January I've actually placed an order for some more stuff, for some work that I'm going to be doing on the layout over at the station end and I'll explain all about that later on. Also, if you watched my sectorisation at 40 video, you'll obviously have gathered by now that it's 40 years since sectorisation was introduced on British Rail. And what I'm going to be doing over the next five months is, as well as a monthly update, I'm also going to be doing a video roughly about 20 odd minutes uh, looking at each of the five business sectors in detail, giving you hints and tips on how to model that sector's trains and also advising your liveries, etc. I also go into each sector in more detail, therefore, than what I did with the previous sectors videos, which I've done a couple of years ago. So, uh, as I say, that'll be over the, the next five months. <coughs> And because I've got nothing else to build at the moment from scale model scenery, that'll probably be coming the weekend after this has been filmed. Um, the first video will be filmed for the sectors in detail at the end of January, and that'll be looking at the parcel sector. The running session that you saw at the start there, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed that running session at the start, and it's something I'm going to do for every January update from now on is that we'll have a running session at the start to show you what the layout was like before I started on work um, prior to the January update. So what you've actually seen there so far is not how certain parts of the layout look now. 
So, uh, I'll go through what has been done in a few minutes and what I am going to be doing. Also, I want to just give a quick shout out before I do get underway to Everard Junction and Dean Park Station. Now, David Watson that runs the Dean Park Station layout, he has just uh, in the last couple of weeks done his annual uh, top 10 models of the year. One of them is actually one that he actually done himself, converted an Oxford Rail Mark III coach into a test car for the Railway Technical Centre. <coughs> now, David, if you're watching this, if I ever get 47973 in its Midland Counties Railways maroon livery, and that was an RTC Railway Technical Centre locomotive, I might need to get you to do a test car for me as well. But anyway, that's well into the future. So, without further ado, <coughs> let's go and have a look at what we've been doing on the layout. And please, uh, any comments, queries, suggestions, put them in the comments below. We'll start off here at the depot. And you can see now that I've got the hard standing here all complete. This, like most of this stuff, is from Scale Model Scenery. And... Uh, I've done a previous video showing you the, the initial build of this, so do go and check that out. The hard standing, as you can see, is slightly higher, and I've kept it away at parts from the track itself. That's to allow the free movement of the points, you see? So that goes there. If I push it back, if I had it right up there, it wouldn't, wouldn't have worked. That's why down here, for instance, I've had to actually um, cut a notch in. What will happen next is we'll get ballast put into here and it will all get glued down and that way this bit of track will be completed and it will need the addition of some signs and probably um, ground frames as well to be installed on there. One thing you'll notice as well is and I'll put a bit of hard stand in here that's actually wrong, I shouldn't have done that, it should actually have been this concrete that I've put in there, so that's something I'm going to be changing because along here I'll have to all be concrete, but at the end here it might well be hard standing. You'll also notice that there's no lamp, depot lamps at the moment. Scale model scenery does a depot floodlight kit, and Dylan Sanderson did make one. <coughs> So later this year I'm going to get one and I'm going to position it probably about here and I might get a second one for here uh, to simulate illumination of the depot area. So I'll, I'll, I'll initially get one of them because they're about 20 odd pound and I'll do a video where I'm showing you how, uh, how it's getting built up. This is obviously the scale model scenery concrete sheets, and indeed that's what was um, used on there for the, the depot building, the, the signal box. We'll come back to that in a minute. So it's really this that's got to run along here. And this crash barrier will get extended a little bit, probably to round about here, I would think. Speaking of the depot, We've got obviously these two dropper wires here. One of them came out down here. Well, as you can see, my soldering iron um, only just managed to do it, but it's back in place now, so hopefully it just needs to be crimped that actually, which is something I've forgotten to do. Hey ho. But that's uh, the depot area, the depot wiring all back up to normal again, so hopefully the soldering iron will hold out for the, the job of putting dropper wires into the end of this siding and the siding where the shunter goes as well. One other thing that I've done down here at the depot is I've got the most of the foliage down here in gr ground cover for a little walkway and you'll see I've made little steps as well. The reason that I've done it like that is obviously now that I've got the concrete and hard standing down it's flush with the track and it's therefore higher up, so I couldn't just have a drop there. There you go. 
I had to have something else. So this is what I've done. I've still got to uh, seal it down from the top with PV water mixture, but that's pretty much it complete now there. And same for here, I'll just need to get a, a wee drop down. This is the scale model scenery torture yourself kit, also known as a chain link fence kit. Going to replace that later in the year with um, another scale model, model scenery fence. It'll be something that more akin to this style. Uh, believe me, uh, it is a torture yourself kit, and I do not have the exclusive rights to that phrase because, in fact, Richard Warren at Everard Junction described it as that as well when he was doing it in one of his projects. Sorry, Justin Noble, no offence intended to any of you SMS. Couple more shout outs for you. Give a, a look at Dudley Central, whose layout is set in the uh, West Midlands Central PTE sectorisation era. And if you like your Leyland Fleetline double deckers, then um, you'll certainly like his layout as well. And he's also on Instagram as well as YouTube. And give a shout out to West Blythe MPD, uh, who's also here on YouTube. And if you've got any time as well, uh, and I'm pretty sure you will have, then go and check out my good friend on Twitter, Nick Mullins, rugby union and tennis commentator. You can find him on Twitter at and Nick Mullins. Coats of many colours. This layout was set in round about the 1989 to 1991 period when bus deregulation um, was at its height and there was competition between bus operators and commercial routes. And that explains what we've got here. This vehicle, as you see here, is actually something that I purchased at the Cooper Model Railway Club Christmas show that I featured in video number 80. Uh, I think it was video number 80 a wee while back. It's um, an MCW Metro bus and Dudley Central, obviously he'll be familiar with that given the fact that um, the Metro bus was made in Birmingham by Metro Camel Wayman and also um, West Midlands Travel bought hundreds of the type inevitably. The vehicle actually, if, you, if I turn it around here and I'll show you, it um, has Shopper Special A44 on it as its destination. I mentioned you about bus deregulation because in the late 1980s Strathclyde Buses, which was the old um, Strathclyde PT bus operation, expanded its operations into parts of Lanarkshire and uh, over into Paisley in competition with other operators, including those of the then Scottish Transport Group, that being Clydeside Buses, which is now McGill's, and Kelvin Scottish and Central Scottish, which is now First Glasgow, and ironically enough, Strathclyde's Buses is now actually absorbed into First Glasgow as well. So this vehicle is actually running in competition with our cent uh, Central SMT, or by this time it would have been Kelvin Central Buses um, service. I must explain that the, the Western Scottish Leyland National, you see there, which is heading to Kilmarnock, is not actually in direct competition with those two operators. STG operators um, would obviously run from one territory, their own territory, into another territory in, re in regulated days. My own local operator at the time was Fife Scottish, and it did run services into Stirling, which was Midland Territory, and into Edinburgh, which was Eastern Scottish Territory. And it's the same down in England as well. Um, Northumbria Motor Services ran services well, in, well into uh, Go Ahead Northern Territory. East Midland Motor Services run, run a service well out of its territory into Doncaster, the number 20, so that is a bit realistic there, as is that. I mentioned about SM, Central SMT for Central Scottish. CentralSMT.co.uk, the website hasn't been updated for some years, but it does give you an idea of this vast company um, that was um, so profitable, the most profitable in the Scottish Transport Group that 
the company's profits for one year at Central SMT paid for the entire Scottish Transport Group bus order for the next year in the 70s. There were change, that was changed days when you had lots of coal mines in other industry there. Now we're going to stay on the street scene because obviously um, you'll not because it'll tie in with something that's going to be around there that you're going to see shortly. I'm going to get a back scene for all the way along here. Obviously I'll need to make alterations with the socket and the fuse box. The back scene I'm going to put here though will be an industrial type one because we are in uh, South Lanarkshire and round about this time there was the likes of the Ravens Creek Steelworks and the Clybridge Pipe Mill were still in operation. Nowadays only the DL plate mill at Motherwell is still in existence. <coughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be putting a back scene with an industrial type um, background to signify how close this whole town is to industry. <coughs> There'll be, I would imagine I'll put a housing one probably around about here. I'll have to order the back scenes from Gage Master and they only need to be stuck onto a scale model scenery grey board to go along here. But that's what is going to be happening. And in an imaginary term, the first stop after Clyde Bridge is Kingston Park. And that would actually be the main industrial part of the town, Kingston Park. So uh, the back scene will signify how close the town is to industry. I, mean, I know it was myself from this village at 11. Um, the old Bing from Bohill Pit, which later became the Bohill Coal Washery, um, dominated over the skyline. You were really close to it. All gone now, of course, with land reclamation. So that's what I'll be getting put along here at some point, hopefully during 2022. And there'll hopefully also be a couple more vehicles on the, the street scene as well. Now, just before I go and reveal all to you about what's happened on this side, my good friends at Wrangler, it's their 75th anniversary in 2022. So there'll be all sorts of deals, I'm sure, on their website at wrangler.co.uk, so go and check them out. Somebody else to go and check out um, on YouTube is the Warlink Model Railway Club. So please go and check them out. I'm sure they'll be grateful for your support as well. And while we're at it, um, Check out a good friend of mine on Instagram. Uh, very good uh, and very popular singer, Hayden Haddock. So if you could go and check him out, please, as well. I'm sure he'll appreciate your support. He's an American country singer and he actually does wear Wrangler as well. Now you'll notice um, there's a little bit of change to the back scene here, so I'm just going to swing the camera around and let you see it. The old back scene style that I had up there was crap to say the least. And you'll notice there that um, the word Railway Modeler. The January 2022 issue of Railway Modeler magazine had two free back scene sheets supplied with it. It's in a rural landscape which kind of doesn't tie in with Clyde Bridge in a sense, but looking at where this town would have been set on an imaginary map south of East Colbride and Hamilton, you were getting very close to rural Lanarkshire. So this does sort of tie in here. These have been stuck onto one millimetre grey board from scale model scenery and this one is only halfway along because what's going to happen is I'm going to have the rest of that back scene here and the plan is that there'll be a new retaining wall from scale model scenery. This is, by the way, the stuff that's actually on order from SMS. It'll be stuck onto some grey board. And there'll be buildings. You get these back scene houses and back scene shops. I've ordered some already. The plan is that the new retaining wall, which will look similar to this sort of brickwork, so it'll be more realistic than that, It'll actually go along a bit and then it'll come all the way down and then at the end here I've got this problem because of this bit of wall is not tight up against the back scene so I'll fashion in something here that'll allow it, it to then sit flat on the wall there. 
There'll also be some buildings from scale models here, what are called back scene buildings, and they'll actually sit, they'll literally sit on this back scene here. And that'll give the sort of <coughs> urbanesque feel. There'll be some houses, a couple of shops, and I'll set them up a little bit higher to signify as if they were across a road. And that's why this is actually sitting up here and I've not cut off that bit there. Again, to signify that it is a little bit further back. Um, to make it look a little bit further away by having it sitting higher up. So that means that that bit there with railway modeler rural landscape photographic back scene will be hidden. And as I say, it'll come all the way up. And then once it gets to here, there'll also be a, a sort of industrial unit type. Um, shop. I think this one will be a carpet place, and I'll come along here, and I'll abut there, and go along there. Moving on, the new retaining wall will sit at a higher height, and this here is designed to be the new pavement, as it were, for the, re the back of the retail park. These um, Ten Commandments buildings. I think it might be too heavy to sit on that, and I'm surprised it actually lasted so long on that. Um, let's take one and have a look. Yeah, you can see there it's starting to sink, so I'm not at all happy with that. Put that back there. But what will happen is, the back scene will go on there as well. We'll then have um, the scale model scenery retaining its uh, street wall that you see here. But because I'm only going to be sticking it up against the wall, against the back scene, I won't need to have it four thick, I'll just have to have it two sections thick. And that, that way I can actually put the other sections, the other two sections onto here to give some depth to the retaining wall. I'll try and build a new style unit in here, or I may actually put a fence up there to signify perhaps the garden centre or being q or perhaps a good inroad, and we'll maybe have the garden centre in there. The retaining wall will go in, and as I say, this will all go all the way along. Carry on. That black pavement is simply one millimetre grey board from scale model scenery, painted black. It'll carry on all the way along here. The retaining wall, at times, will carry on along here. Now, as they used to say in those Volvo adverts, here's the clever bit. The, the retaining wall is going to make a curve around here. And in order to do that, how I'm going to have to do it is bend the, the grey board a little bit, and I'm going to make sort of little angles shaped out of the grey board, about four or five thick, and have them attached to possibly some more grey board here, to allow a bend around here. That'll come out and the, the bit here will have to stay as, as it is, but I can, I can make it possible into a ramp to allow access to the co-op. Because it'll be high up, we'll need steps down there to the co-op as I say, I can make a ramp up and have the ramp coming down here and then this is all going to be covered over the new back scene. That's why I've got the push-pull chain parked here now because it's going to show you the slight difficulty I might have. I've got to make sure there's still enough clearance for the Mark III coaches. So that's my plan there. I'll be doing throughout the year, and the, all this will go, and it'll be a much rounder shape. I'll rebuild the bus station, but using the same brick as that to tie it in, and it'll come out a little bit. The uh, back, the retaining wall, and I'll make up a new surface for here. You see as well, because it'll be a bit taller, so I'll be sitting higher up. And so the co-op will have to sit a little, probably a little bit higher up too, but not too much. <coughs> There'll be a new wall put in there. This chain link fencing will be replaced as well. Now on the, the 
the Railway Modellers Club, I was asking this question uh, about the layout and retaining walls and asking whether it was whether you would have a different brick have the retaining wall flush with the surface and a different brick going up or the retaining wall actually forming the, the top wall there and two people did actually respond and said that um, it is quite possible for retaining walls to actually go much higher than being flush with the pavement and to actually form the boundary wall and indeed one of them showed me a photo um, of one such example near them so that's what's going to happen the current arrangement I've got here is not exactly very good and if I can get that to be f flush with there and you can actually see there is still just enough room I might even just, if it comes up there, there might just be a small bend which will leave me with this area here to try and make a ramp to go down <coughs> Um, the idea behind the ramp here, although the layout was set in 1990 and this was well before the days of low floor buses and disabled um, improvements to disabled access I know at Kirkcaldy bus station there is a ramp that goes down from the bus station itself to the entrance to what was the postings and another ramp taking you on to Hill Street and that was installed when the bus station was rebuilt in the late 70s, early 80s for the posting shopping centre opening. So the ramp there was actually coloured uh, with a, an orange surface, I believe, orange slabs. Um, but we'll restrict ourselves to black, I think, uh, to a black surface for that. But we'll see how we go anyway. So one other thing I forgot to mention as well is here, this comet will get taken out and I'm actually going to instead replace it with something a bit more appropriate for the bus station. We'll, sig we'll make it into a low relief uh, Kelvin Central buses um, depot. It'll, whether it will have the same brickwork as that I don't know yet but um, that's going to be going through time. But we're going to have to start off when I do this with here working along a bit so I can get the right height of the brick so I can get the right height of the retaining wall to go down there and that is actually what's going to be the feature of the February 2022 update and that's another reason why this late this update is getting filmed so early so it'll give me plenty of time to get extra content for you so that's what's been happening at Clyde Bridge over the last few weeks and as you'll see there's quite a lot more to go <coughs> and I forgot to mention just one other thing there'll be more back scene probably the houses going around there and there as well so that's that's what's going to be happening and what I'm going to be concentrating on over the next few months is the back scene here and getting the retaining wall replaced and looking a lot better if I can get that done we'll then take it from there what's going to happen next but um, that certainly looks a, a lot better at the moment. I'll leave the push-pull train there for the moment, obviously, as I say, because I'll need to use that as a guide, and plus the fact it'll give me access into here right now. Now, just before I do finish off for this month, I mentioned to you as well about the scale model sceneries. They have a railway modellers club. Um, there's a free... Um, club which gives you access to certain things and there's a paid membership uh, scheme that gives you access to a lot more I'll put the link to the Railway Modelers Club in the description below so you can have a look at it I'm on there and there's other people on there as well including my good friend Ryan Gray who has the layout Eden Road TMD which you can find on Facebook and if you're in Scotland, go into Facebook and check out the um, Scottish Railway Modellers Facebook page. That's run by the Cooper Model Railway Club and I'm sure they'll be delighted for you to join. So I hope you've enjoyed all of that for this month. Sorry I've waffled on quite a bit, but it is important to explain to you what's going to be happening over the next few months. The next video you'll see from the layout will be um, sectors in detail, parcel sector, when we'll be looking at this chap here and the work that his sector done. 
In the meantime, please take care of yourselves, stay safe, won't you, and enjoy your layouts, and we'll see you next month. Goodbye for now.